In January, at the World Economic Forum annual meeting held in Davos, Switzerland, a major initiative was announced to tackle climate change and loss of biodiversity. This initiative is to plant one trillion trees globally. There's a lot of work going on already, and this initiative hopes to unite and promote reforestation efforts worldwide. But how will trees help address climate change? While trees take in carbon dioxide through their leaves, they then use this carbon dioxide in the process of photosynthesis to make glucose. This glucose is then used by the tree in many different ways, but it essentially uses it to grow, and so the carbon is locked up in the tree, which is why trees are known as carbon sinks. This is why it's so ludicrous, at this point in our Earth's history, to be cutting down and burning our forests. We not only lose a carbon sink, but we are also releasing carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere, thus adding a global warming gas. It is a double whammy. But will planting one trillion trees actually mitigate climate change and increase biodiversity? Yes, but this is not the only strategy. We must also stop emitting carbon into the atmosphere. Tree planting also needs to be done correctly. In a recent video about saving the habitat of orangutans, I talked about the Sumatran Orangutan Society, who have reforestation projects in Sumatra. These projects have been successful in terms of planting more trees and the trees being diverse enough to encourage and support the returning wildlife. It took four years of hard work for this to happen. Most importantly, local people have a vested interest in the project. They have jobs in the tree nurseries, in planting and in nurturing the growing trees. This is crucial if we want to stop further deforestation of forests for monocultural crops such as palm oil. There are many such initiatives around the world, and if they're all planned carefully, then it can work. In an exciting and uplifting article in Science about the potential for global tree restoration, the scientists are very positive that this could really help mitigate anthropogenic climate change. The scientists used a computer model to generate a map of the Earth's tree carrying capacity to see if the IPCC suggestion of an increase in forested areas of 1 billion hectares needed to limit global warming by 1.5 degrees Celsius by 2050 was actually possible. They have estimated that 4.4 billion hectares of canopy cover can be supported on land under existing climate conditions. 2.8 billion hectares already exist on land today, so 1.6 billion hectares more could exist. However, much of this land is currently used for agriculture and human development. So this number goes down to 0.9 billion hectares, identified as possible regions for reforestation. This does mean that the IPCC target of 1 billion hectares is just about achievable and would store an additional 204 gigatons of carbon. But does 1 billion hectares of land available equate to being able to plant 1 trillion trees? Typical planting densities of trees are 1,000 to 2,500 per hectare, depending on the species. Obviously this is a very rough estimate and many factors need to be taken into account. But if my math is correct, planting 1,000 trees per hectare on the 1 billion hectare of land identified as available gives us 1 trillion trees and 2.5 trillion if the high density was used. So it does seem that it's possible. This fantastic news does come with a health warning, because as our climate warms, the global tree carrying capacity will decrease. Although there will be an increase in tree cover in colder regions of 30-40%, to 40%, these areas have a lower average tree cover than tropical rainforest cover, which will decrease by 90-100%. to 100%. So there will be a potential decrease in global tree cover of 223 million hectares by 2050, which is a scary thought, so we need to plant trees now in order to save our trees. The model also does not take into account changes in land use, such as pasture and cattle raising. And since countries like Brazil continue deforestation on a large scale, I would say that changes in land use are very probable. As a planet, we need to stop deforestation now. It also takes a long time for trees to grow and reach maturity, so we are not going to see changes in atmospheric carbon for decades. The important thing is that we start planting now. Another interesting fact is that 50% of the tree planting potential comes from only six countries, which are Russia, the US, Canada, China, Australia and Brazil. 10% of countries have committed to restoring an area which exceeds the area they have available for restoration, and 43% of countries have committed to restoring an area which is less than the total area they have available. The One Trillion Tree Initiative should be able to help with this mismatch and develop a strategy for maximum planting where it is most advantageous to do so. 
Trees have to be planted in the correct place, otherwise there can be drastic consequences, as was the case in Canada in 2016 in Fort McMurray. Unfortunately, in the 1980s, the Canadian government drained large areas of the Alberta swamps and planted black spruce. There is a positive feedback mechanism called the Water Table Depth Afforestation Feedback Mechanism. As the water table depth increases, as did in this case, the black spruce net above ground productivity increased and they grew particularly wide canopies, which leads to less light reaching the ground, which killed off the peat moss. Peat moss acts like a fire retardant and its replacement is a much drier kind of moss. These changes all contributed to the huge wildfire which nearly wiped out the town of Fort McMurray. Another case of reforestation going wrong is found in China, where since 1952, afforestation has been occurring in the far north, where desertification was threatening the land. Unfortunately, they planted non-native trees, which have an evapotranspiration rate greater than the precipitation rate. Scientists have modelled this data and concluded that these trees will have an adverse effect on the groundwater resource and that the programme should be reassessed. Trees also bring other benefits to us as well as reducing atmospheric carbon. They also prevent soil erosion. Wind and rain are the two main forces that erode bare soil. Roots hold the soil in place and help stop it being washed or blown away. Roots also prevent soil compaction and help water soak into the ground instead of flowing over its surface. Tree foliage intercepts falling rainwater and reduces the force it exerts when it hits the ground. Tree foliage also acts as a windbreak and reduces the amount of soil that is carried away during heavy winds. They also have been shown to have amazing health and well-being effects on humans, such as a reduction in the symptoms of depression. Trees can also be planted in urban areas and bring many benefits to our towns and cities. One such benefit is that they help to reduce stormwater runoff. This is runoff which falls onto paved surfaces. A greater amount of runoff is generated compared to runoff from the same storm falling over a forested area. Large volumes of water are carried to streams, lakes, wetlands and rivers and can cause flooding and erosion, causing huge problems to habitats, not to mention people's homes and businesses, as is happening to people in the UK at the moment. Trees can help reduce stormwater runoff as their canopy captures and stores rainfall. They then release water into the atmosphere through evapotranspiration. Trees and forests reduce pollutants by taking up nutrients and other pollutants from soils and water through their roots. They can transform pollutants into less harmful substances. Tree roots and leaf litter create soil conditions that encourages the infiltration of rainwater into the soil, which helps to replenish groundwater supplies and decreases flooding and erosion. Trees can also reduce temperatures in urban environments. They intercept and absorb light, thus providing shade and through evapotranspiration cool the air on average by 1.9 degrees Celsius. Trees reduce air pollution such as particulate matter, sulphur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide which have been linked to various diseases in humans. It has also been found that students who had views of trees and green environment from their classrooms had better attention and they had a faster recovery from a stressful event. And of course trees offer food and shelter for numerous types of animals in our urban areas. So what can we do to help? Well, there are many organisations that you can donate to to help with their reforestation projects. In a previous video, I talked about the Sumatra and Orangutan Society, which has reforestation projects in Sumatra. There is also the Arbor Day Foundation, which has, amongst others, the Community Tree Recovery Programme, which enables communities in the US to replant trees after natural disasters. It is this foundation that the money raised by the Team Trees when Mr Beast reached his 20 millionth subscriber has gone to in order to buy and plant 20 million trees. Another organisation that I thought was interesting is called Gone West. They support some projects but also help you to travel sustainably by offsetting your carbon footprint. For example, air travel offsets are calculated at £2 per hour of air travel. So you can make a donation for the amount of time you've flown. If you want to actually plant trees, there are many opportunities where you can get involved and plant trees locally, or you can go abroad. You just need to do a bit of research. The cynics among us claim that planting trees is costly and won't solve our climate problem. Well, yes, it will cost money, but it will cost far more if we don't do something. As for solving our climate problem, then no, it won't, not just on its own. We have to stop deforestation, using so much fossil fuel, change our agricultural practices, the list goes on. 
but it is something that every person can volunteer to do. It gives hope and it will make the world a happier place.